Let's be honest, writers are some of the most self-critical, self-deprecating, and self-doubting people possibly on the planet. And I totally understand why. Writing is such an intimate and vulnerable creative act, and the process really requires a lot of introspection. This is why great writing can be so emotionally powerful and moving, but I think it's also why writers tend to fall into some of these destructive attitudes and habits that can actually hold them back. So today I want to talk through five of these destructive writer behaviors and how to reframe them so that you don't fall into these traps and ultimately hinder your own progress as a writer. Ultimately, I wanna help you boost your confidence and improve your outlook on your writing craft. If you are currently working on a story of any kind, I recommend subscribing to my channel. Every week, I either post a video like this with tips on writing, or I talk about the book publishing industry, which is my background professionally. Also, if you have a current work in progress, head down to the description and click the link to grab my free story self-assessment. It is designed to help you identify the strengths and weaknesses in your own story, which I know can be so hard when you are so close to it yourself. It's also going to sign you up for my newsletter that's launching soon with exclusive writing tips and resources. With that, let's head into the first destructive writing behavior, which is not letting others read your story. Now, if you're ultimately writing just for personal reasons in a journal or a diary to keep a document of your life or something like that, it is totally fine to keep it as just something that is for yourself and that you don't share with anyone. But ultimately, most writers do want to share their story with someone eventually. However, this act of sharing often turns into this huge roadblock fraught with doubt and concern and anxiety. I've met so many writers who really just stop at this mark where they want to share their story, but are ultimately just terrified of doing so because they fear that once they share their story, they're going to get torn down or that person is going to hate it and therefore hate them as a person. There's so much wrapped up in this act of sharing your story because in many cases it is something so personal to you that it turns into this huge ordeal that a lot of writers struggle to overcome. If you are currently in this part of the process and you're facing some of these issues, the first thing you need to do is recognize that this mindset is actually holding you back from reaching your potential as a writer. It's also probably keeping you from achieving your goals and it's keeping you from growing as a writer and improving your craft. Sharing your work in many aspects is the only way to progress forward on all of those fronts. A great way to dip your toes into sharing your work if you struggle to feel comfortable with it is to start with a open-minded, and friendly critique setting. This is a great way to get used to sharing your work with others because they are also going to be sharing it with you. So it goes both ways. You're also going to get used to hearing others' opinions on your work, good and bad. This really is essential for you to develop as a writer. Hearing how your story is being received and understanding if that is matching up with your intentions or not. So this could be a formal workshop arrangement, such as if you take a writing course through a community center of some kind or a college perhaps, or it could take the form of having a beta reading arrangement with someone where you exchange manuscripts and give each other feedback. Now you could also hire a professional editor to work with you on your story especially if you want that level of expertise and that level of experience to help you take it to the next level. As a professional developmental book editor myself, there have been several clients I've worked with where I am the first person to read their book in its entirety other than them. And that's a really special place to be in. Ultimately, at the end of the day, remember that your story is not going to be able to make the impact that you want it to unless you ultimately get over the hurdle of sharing it. You have to be willing to allow people to experience it, otherwise you're gonna be the only one to ever know about it. The second destructive writer behavior is holding yourself to unrealistic standards. Many writers get 
stuck in this mindset of setting unrealistic expectations for their writing or their career. Some examples of this would be expecting that you have to reach a bestseller list of some kind, or expecting that you have to win certain awards, or expecting that you need to sign with a literary agent within this specific time frame that you've set, or that you expect that you are going to sign a book deal for a certain amount of money. What can happen here is that if you don't reach these goals, which ultimately are really groundless to begin with, you can feel disappointed and discouraged or even that you are a failure. At the worst, it can actually keep you from writing again, which is absolutely the worst thing. So you really need to be gentle and realistic with yourself. It is completely okay if your book, especially if it's your first book, doesn't get a book deal with a major publisher, or if it doesn't reach bestseller status on Amazon or another bestseller list. That does not define your worth as an author or the worth of your book at all. There are plenty of successful authors who have built a audience, have reached a number of readers, and who have even made a profit from their writing without any of these so-called achievements. So don't feel like you have to reach them in order to be a real writer. Remember, at the end of the day, if you write, you are a writer. The third destructive writer behavior is doubting your abilities. Because writing is a subjective art and pursuit, it can be really challenging to try to decipher if you are a good writer or a bad writer, and writers can get really hung up on this. I see so many writers worrying about whether they are good enough to continue writing or if they should just give up and come up with a new hobby. But I really don't find it productive to think in these terms. Instead, I encourage you to see writing as a skill that you can continue to grow and develop because that truly is what it is. Focus not on how good you are or what your natural ability might be, but focus on how you can improve your craft and become an even stronger storyteller. Nurturing your craft in that way is so much more productive than trying to put a label on whether you are a good writer or a bad writer. Ultimately, doubting yourself and worrying about if you are a bad writer is only going to stifle your creativity and lead to a spiral of negative and unproductive thoughts. Sometimes this feeling that you are a bad writer comes from negative, what I would call constructive, feedback that you get from other people who read your work. And I totally understand why. It can be hard to get that constructive feedback. But rather than seeing it as something you are doing wrong, just see it as an opportunity for improvement. Oftentimes, these constructive comments actually come with positive comments as well and compliments that writers tend to look over because they are so focused on the negative. If a person who read your work gave you a genuine compliment on your writing, take it to heart, believe it, print it out and put it up on your desk next to your computer if you have to. Revisit it and look at it anytime that you feel that doubt about your work because just focusing on the negative is not going to get you anywhere. The fourth destructive writer habit is being impatient. Writing is often a lifelong pursuit, something that you continue to turn back to time and time again throughout different periods of your life, whether you take a break from writing for a while and come back to it, or you continually write from a young age all the way through adulthood. It is a pursuit that ultimately just takes a ton of time and energy and effort, especially if you ultimately plan to write something of a book length and potentially publish it. It's critical to stay patient with yourself and with the process. Writing a book itself can take many months or even years, and then the process of publishing can also take just as long, especially if you pursue the traditional publishing path that can take multiple years from the time you are reaching out to literary agents to actually seeing the book published and on the shelf. So being impatient and creating this false sense of urgency where there ultimately really isn't one can just be unproductive. It can be damaging to your confidence and just lead to more disappointment. If you rush the process, such as when you are editing your book for publication, you also run the risk of the result not being as strong as it could be if you really just sit down and take the time that it needs. If you are someone who works well with deadlines, then by all means, use deadlines to help you achieve your goals. But I do recommend using them as guideposts. If you don't meet those deadlines, do not beat yourself up. Just 
revise your timeline and keep going. Let this creative process take as much time as it needs to. That is going to give you the best output. The last destructive writer habit I wanna talk about is distancing yourself. Writing at the end of the day is a solo act and that is one of the beauties of it. It's something that you do on your own, something that you create solely from your head, which is in and of itself amazing. But we have this stereotypical image of a writer who's alone in a dark room, who's brooding and moody, maybe it's raining outside, and remember, writing really doesn't have to be that isolating. And in fact, if you totally isolate yourself throughout the entire writing process, you can miss out on opportunities to strengthen your work and improve as a writer. There's a really rich community of writers who are eager to share experiences and learn from each other. So here are some ways that you can break free from this solo writer stereotype and really embrace the broader community and develop your story and yourself in the process. The first is joining some kind of writing group, whether it's online or in person in your community, or you could take a formal course or workshop, as I mentioned earlier. It could be as simple as interacting with other writers on Twitter, following writers back, retweeting things, joining part of the conversation, or joining a forum of some kind, or simply reading other writers and editors' blogs and signing up for newsletters. That allows you to gauge how other people are talking about writing and it can spur your own creative ideas. Ultimately, listening to others and also putting yourself out there a little bit sometimes can spark a lot of newfound energy for your own project and help you see it in another way. I hope these tips help you break out of those destructive writer habits and mindsets and allow you to approach your craft with newfound energy and positive attitude. Let me know in the comments if you've personally experienced any of these destructor writer behaviors or if there are others that you've found yourself falling into. If you want some more tips for how to strengthen yourself as an emerging author, check out my video on how to become a best-selling author where I offer some more tactical tips. As always, if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I've loved growing this community. It means so much to me and allows me to know that I'm continuing to bring you interesting and helpful content. As I mentioned earlier, if you have a work in progress, don't forget to grab my free story self-assessment. The worksheet will help you take your own story to the next level. Thank you so much for watching and happy writing.